All right, you guys, Apple just released the new iOS liquid glass, and it seems like this new trend just exploded and everybody's trying to recreate it. So you probably know what it is. In this video, I'm going to try to recreate this effect as well. So let's take a look. I'm going to go with this image as a reference, and this is my artboard size. And first, what I'm going to do is go here and let's go and select the solid color. Make sure it's on white, click OK. And now let's go to the rectangle, make sure the fill is on black. And click on the stroke, click on the none. And here I'm going to go and create a rectangle like this. Now I'm going to go to these little circles, drag it all the way in. So this is going to make it rounded. And now let's go to the rectangle and double click on the layer. Let's go to fill opacity, decrease it to zero. And let's activate the shadow. Blend mode is going to be a multiply black opacity. I'm going to increase it to 90. Let's go to the angle, uncheck use global lighting and type in 90. I'm going to go to the distance, increase it to 12. Choker is going to be 7. And the size is going to be 75. So this is going to look something like this. Now I also want to intensify these shadows. So I'm going to go to the inner shadow and click on the plus. And I'm going to select the second inner shadow. And let's go back to the angle. And here I'm going to type in minus 90 instead of 90. I'm going to increase the distance to 60. And I'm also going to increase the size to 115. Click OK. Now we're going to need to save this. So let's go to the file. Click on Save As. I'm going to rename this as Displacement. Make sure to save it as a PSD file. Click on Save. And now I'm going to go back to the layers. Drag and drop the effects into the bin. And I'm also going to uncheck the fill. So now we're left with the rectangle and the background. And let's select the background, press Ctrl J to duplicate. And let's go ahead and right click on the top layer with the background and select convert a smart object. Now let's go to filter, distort, and let's select displace. Now let's go to horizontal scale. I'm going to type in, for example, 50, vertical 50, click OK. And this window is going to pop up and I'm going to select the displacement that I saved before. Click on open and take a look at that. It is going to start distorting this rectangle right here. And because of the horizontal and vertical distortion is going to stretch out the right side and also the bottom side of the image. So in order to make this disappear, I'm going to press and hold control. And let's go to the layer with the rectangle and click on the thumbnail. And this is going to highlight the rectangle. Make sure that you're on the layer with the background and click on the mask. And now we get back to normal. If you want to increase or decrease the displacement, you also can go back here to the displacement and change up the values. All right, so from here, we can go back to the rectangle layer and let's go and double click on it. And here we're going to go and activate the inner shadow. Let's go to the blend mode and I'm going to change it to white. Click OK. I'm going to change the multiply to color Dutch. And I'm also going to decrease the opacity to 30. I'm also going to go to the distance, increase it to 50. Choker is going to be zero. Size is going to be 85. And you also can rotate the angle if you want. I'm going to go with minus 45. Now let's go to the second inner shadow. Let's activate it. Change up the color to white. I'm going to go to the blend mode, change it to normal. Here the angle is going to be 45. Let's go and decrease the opacity to 50. Go to distance, it's going to be zero, choker zero, size is going to be 32. And about least we're going to add another inner shadow. So let's click on the plus, let's select the bottom one. Actually, only by duplicating it is going to look great, but I'm just going to tweak it anyway. So I'm going to go to the blend mode and I'm going to add a linear dodge add and I'm going to decrease it to 20. Angle is going to be 130, distance is going to be 20 and the size 40. So now it's a little bit more subtle. So right now, as you can see, it's kind of bubbly looking. So we're going to need to flat that down. And because of that, I'm going to select the setting and I'm going to go to the color and change it to some gray. Probably going to go with this. Click OK. Blend mode is on multiply. Opacity is going to be 50. Angle 90. I'm going to decrease the distance to 40 and the size 55. So now it's going to look a little bit more flat. I also going to go and add stroke. And I'm going to increase the size to six. The position is going to be outside. And here we're going to go to the fill type and change it to gradient. Great. Let's click on the gradient. And I'm going to select the black handle, double click on it. And I'm going to change up the color. And I'm going to select from here with the eyedropper tool a dark color. And I'm also going to make it more lighter, something like this. Click OK. And I'm going to bring this to the center. Press and hold Alt, drag the white handle on the left. 
and this is gonna duplicate it. And I also gonna duplicate this uh, greenish color. Click OK. For the angle, I'm gonna go with 54. And about at least to make it pop, I also gonna add a drop shadow. And let's go to the blend mode color, click on the color, and with eyedropper tool, I'm gonna select a darker color, something like this, click OK. I'm gonna increase the opacity to 60. Uncheck the use global light. And I'm going to change it to 65. Distance is going to be 40. Spread 15. And the size is going to be 100. There you go. And let's click OK. And not but least, I'm also going to activate back the color fill. And I'm going to double click on the thumbnail. And decrease it to black. Click OK. And let's go to the opacity. And I'm going to decrease it quite a bit. And I'm also going to drag the color fill in between the backgrounds right here and I'm gonna increase it more. So this way the liquid glass is gonna have more contrast. I'm gonna go with 28. Now they also put some blur on it, so I'm gonna go and select this button layer. i also gonna rename it as button. And let's go to the filter, go to blur, and select Gaussian blur. And here you can add or remove blur. Probably gonna go with like six, click okay. I'm also gonna drag the phone icon somewhere here, and I'm gonna bring it on the top. Press and hold Alt and drag the effects icon on the vector smart object top layer. And this is gonna duplicate the effects. I also gonna double click on it and uncheck satin and the inner shadows, but you also can change them if you want. Click OK and pretty much this was it. Thanks for watching.